Today's message, consider Jesus. I have to reshoot because I had the camera in the wrong position. So I'd just like to show you our beautiful cross first of all, which was the focus of these two words. Consider Jesus. Now first reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses one to three. As for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses round us. So then, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds us, holds on to us so tightly. And let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross. And he is now seated at the right hand side of God's throne. Think of what he went through, how he put up with so much hatred from sin, sinners. So do not let yourselves become discouraged and give up. And the second reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 13 to 20. Then Jesus asked them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you other, ever understand any parable? The sower sows God's message. Some people are like the seeds that fall along the path. As soon as they hear the message, Satan comes and takes it away. Other people are like the seeds that fall on rocky ground. As soon as they hear the message, they receive it gladly. But it does not sink deep into them, and they don't last long. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the message, they give up at once. Other people are like the seeds sown among the thorn bushes. These are the ones who hear the message, but the worries about this life, the love for riches, and all other kinds of desires crowd in and choke the message, and they don't bear fruit. But other people are like the seeds sown in good soil, they hear the message, accept it, and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. May God bless his word to us. Amen. We began our sermon with Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3, here in the World English Bible. Therefore, let us also, seeing we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself that you don't grow weary, fainting in your souls. Therefore, it's a, a strange word to begin a new chapter with, and of course the chapter headings in the Bible are there for us to help find our way around the scriptures, but they weren't there in the originals. So it's a strong pointing to all the content that's come before. Who were the people that surround us as so great a cloud? of witnesses. 
What comes before is a whole chapter which could be entitled By Faith. In it, we hear about many of the heroes of faith celebrated in the scriptures. Let's read some together. So this is Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. For by this the elders obtained testimony, obtained God's approval. Verse 6, without faith it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him, for he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. The long list of heroes includes Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, who we'll come to in a minute, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, a history of faith and of the faithful. Let's pause, in verse 11, with Sarah for a moment on this Mothering Sunday. By faith, even Sarah herself received power to conceive, and she bore a child when she was past age, since she counted him faithful who had promised. I just, you kind of got to read it again, haven't you? By faith, by faith, even Sarah herself received power to conceive. And remember that Abraham was 100 plus, and she bore a child when she was past age since she counted him faithful who had promised. Therefore, as many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as innumerable as the sand, which is by the seashore, were fathered by one man and him as good as dead. This is a great story of faith. And I like it as I get older myself. <laughs> faith has miraculous power to change the normal, the natural order of things. I also like Sarah's faith. She believed God was faithful to what he promised, but that didn't mean she found it easy. And the scriptures are bluntly honest. I'm gonna remind us of a tiny portion of the account in Genesis 18, 12 to 15. Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I've grown old, will I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And that's from the World English Bible, it's a bit euphemistic means that they were going to have a pleasant time together. And Yahweh, God's proper name, said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh saying, will I really bear a child when I'm old? Is anything too hard for Yahweh? Yahweh is usually transliterated as the Lord, but it means I am, the great I am. Is anything too hard for the great I am? At the set time, I will return to you when the season comes around and Sarah will have a son by faith. When Sarah denied it, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid, he said, God said, no, you did laugh. So here's Sarah, one of the heroes of faith. Actually, when she's hearing the promise, going, really? At my age? And that's really encouraging for us. Paul in Romans talks about their faith too, but in a more flattering way. God is the one who calls things that are not as though they are. That's Romans 4, 17. We serve and have faith in a God that calls the things that are not as though they are. And that in Hebrews 11 was part of the heroes of faith journey. So God created what is seen, the beauty of creation out of what is not seen. God calls the things which are not as though they were. So from verse 19, without being weakened in faith, this is Abraham now, he didn't consider his own body already having been worn out. Have you ever felt like that? His body feels a bit worn out. Well, Abraham felt that way. Yet he didn't consider his own body already having been worn out, he being about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yet looking to the promise of God, he didn't waver through unbelief, but grew strong through faith, giving glory to God. Our message today is consider Jesus, hold that thought. And being fully assured that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Go back to my first verses there. Therefore, let us also, seeing as we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. He is the one who is worthy of our assurance. So Abraham then was fully assured that what God had promised, he was fully able to perform. Consider Jesus. Let's pick up the main theme then. If we are to keep running the race and not yet 
fail in our faith or get discouraged, we need to consider Jesus. But what does this mean? Jesus himself looked to the joy set before him. He looked beyond all the suffering and instead focused on what it would lead to, your salvation. He looked through the cross, almost like the crosshairs of a focus lens on top of a telescope or a rifle, through the crosshairs. He looked through the cross and he saw you and he saw me and counted us joy. The joy of our salvation, like the parable of the lamb that's found, the lost sheep, there is much rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who comes back into God's family. So he looked through time and he looked through the cross and he saw you and me and for the joy that was set before him, he endured all that suffering. Jesus himself held you and I in his focus, our salvation. I wanted um, the congregation here and for you to experience this shift in perspective. So I did a little drama in the service with the help of St. Edwin and uh, Dawn and Ruth and Tim. And Dawn and Ruth and Tim were personifications of temptation, the thorns that you would have heard in the first reading. You must be really worried about what is happening in Ukraine and the world. Then there are the fuel costs here and the rising cost of living. How are you going to cope? How's your health holding up? What's keeping you awake at night? What aches and pains do you have? Oh, I nearly forgot COVID. How could I forget COVID? How are you feeling? Thank you, thorn number one, thorn number two. Keep that way. Wouldn't it be lovely if you could only have some more money? Imagine what you could buy if you had some cash to spare. Rich people have so few worries. They live in such lovely homes. They can afford the best health care. They can eat out whenever they like. In fact, if you spent less time in church, you may even be able to earn some money so you can buy nice things. Good things. Go on, you deserve more. Thank you. Tempter number three. Church is boring. God is busy. What would you rather be doing today? You're not getting any younger. You need to get out a bit. You could be on the beach. You could go out for lunch. You could visit your family, especially the ones that don't share your love of church. That will be a good witness. You could enjoy yourself with your favorite hobby. You could have had a lie in, especially with the clocks losing you an hour. Thank you. If you can stay around, we'll talk at the same time. So I'll give you a three, two, one, and then you'll start. And then we're going to click together. Okay. Three, two, one, tempt. <laughs> He's listening very attentively, isn't he? Ready? Switch. And what happened is we had St. Edwin, our Eddie, looking at the congregation opposite to the cross. The cross is behind us. Themes, the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things. The worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things. So the media is very, very good at bombarding us with a message of fear, the, uh, the worries of this age. So we live in a, in a world where there is a lot of noise inside our heads, there's a lot of noise through the media, distracting us from considering Jesus. And what we did is we read these out to the congregation, then St Edwin stood here and the three thorns gathered round him. And at the same time, they said those things in his ears. But I'd got the congregation ready to do a click with their fingers. I won't do it too loud because it'll be too loud for the microphone, but you know what it's like to click your fingers for the switch. And when I say switch, we clicked our fingers and Eddie, St. Edwin needed to turn around and look at our beautiful cross behind me to look to Jesus, to consider Jesus. And that changed his perception and I hope our perception of our beautiful illuminated cross. I wonder which of those temptations is the most dominant one for you at the moment. Are you worried about your life and the perils of this age? Is it the deceitfulness of riches where you think, oh, if only I had more money, I'd be safer, I'd be okay? 
Or is it just the distractions of so many wonderful things we can do in the world that stops you considering Jesus? Or Jesus said, the thorns come up and they choke the word. How do we consider Jesus? I have faith that is, for the most time, devoid of any supernatural evidence. It's not like the book of Acts where you see people being healed and the dead raised and all sorts of amazing miracles happening. I've seen no obvious miracles that we read about in the Bible. Many of you will be the same. Our faith is a matter of faith. But God loves this. As we read, without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever comes to him must believe that he exists. Do you believe that he exists? Good. We're off to a good start. We're already considering Jesus. The verse continues, and that he rewards those who seek him. If you seek God through coming to church, the not forsaking of meeting together. Um, if you seek God through your Bible studies, through prayer, through worship, through walking in nature and just thanking God for the abundance. We are seeking him and he rewards those who seek him. One of my favourite characters in the New Testament is the, the disciple who unfortunately got labelled Doubting Thomas in later church traditions. I don't think he's called that in the Bible. But he, he had this wonderful thing after the others had seen Jesus raised from the dead. They were all so rocked by the, the crucifixion. Thomas says something really interesting. He says, unless I put my hands into his side and see the holes that the nails made, I will not believe. Pretty powerful thing to say, I will not believe. He'd made a decision in his head that unless he saw, he would not believe. And we have that saying in the world, seeing is believing. Well, interestingly, Jesus appeared to them all and Thomas was with them uh, a few days later. And he said, Thomas, put your fingers into the holes where the nails were. Put your hand into my side and be not unbelieving instead believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And he said, well, you believe now because you've seen. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. So if you've not seen amazing things and yet you still believe in God and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him, you're blessed. You're pleasing God. How do we seek God and consider Jesus? I believe by doing exactly what we've done today, meeting together. We have not forsaken the meeting together. No, instead we have joined one another here in this venue here on location, but also online to praise and seek God. Both are valid. Martin, our minister, has been providing daily Bible reading guide to help us consider Jesus through reading the word. We as a church are diligent in prayer, again, considering Jesus. Why am I reminding us of what we already know? I'm reminding us because sometimes the thorns speak louder and seem closer. Sometimes the thorns capture our attention and at that moment begin to choke the word and it becomes unfruitful in our lives. The word of God becomes unfruitful in our lives. That's my call to action for all of us is a strange one today. Watch out for the thorns, listen out for the thorns. If you begin to notice that your natural worries about this world and this life are consuming your attention, do the click, switch, and say, I consider Jesus. You can do it with a click of the fingers, a simple click of the fingers, to remind you to switch your attention and consider Jesus. The off switch on the remote on the TV works well too, if you're watching too, too much bad news, if you're listening to too much bad news. Switch it off, switch. If you begin to notice that worldly wealth seems to offer far more comfort than the comfort of God's love and provision for you and the comfort of the comforter, click your fingers and say, switch, I consider Jesus. And if you get itchy feet and start avoiding reading your Bible, opting out of quiet times of study and prayer with God and with others, click your fingers, clap your hands, stomp your feet, whatever it takes to switch your attention back to the cross and beyond the cross to considering Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen.